about some it's uh, actually yeah, yeah just put it this way it's, it's time for, it's time for us to talk about politics on this particular day on 14th a lot has been happening on the political arena and um, let's have to understand how it happens you know in communication it's all about strategy it's all about communication and packaging your message pretty well for the masses to understand and that is why today I have got three people on set. I have Dr. Peter Mulinge who is the leadership and development expert as well as uh, Daniel Orogo who is a political analyst and a columnist as well and the only lady in the panel today is Sylvia Mwichuli, CEO Public Relations Society of uh, Kenya. Welcome gentlemen and lady. You're welcome. Thank you. Today we've done gender parity. Yes. <laughs> the only lady, and she's in, she's in the middle. Uh, I hope you're going to have a discussion, a good one. Mm -hmm. Karibu Nisana to the show. So a lot is happening in the political arena. We all know we just um, six months to the poll, mm -hmm. and politicians are busy crisscrossing the country. We need to understand so far from the messaging aspect, because you see politicians each and every day, they have a new trend, what they talk about, how they package it and how they deliver it to the masses. Mm. So that is going to form our basis of discussion today. But let me start with you, Dr. Tari. Um, what do you make of the campaign statements so far? Are they hitting the bull's eye each and every time they take it to the podium? Oh, thank you. First of all, I want to take this uh, opportunity to say thank you for mm -hmm. calling me to this show. I want to say that is a great honor for me to come mm. and uh, share my thoughts about what is happening in the uh, campaign trends yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. uh, to coming towards the election as it connects it to leadership. Mm. Uh, I do leadership uh, consultants and developments and uh, I have been uh, talking with uh, quite a number of uh, politicians and uh, people who are aspirants who are looking forward to become governors, mm. uh, senators, and uh, M MPs, and also women rep, mm. and MCA. And uh, yes, there is that mood of campaigning and uh, trying to to fight yes. for the for the for the who is going to be the winner mm -hmm. and who is going to get what who is going to become what so there is a lot of um, campaigning in the country mm -hmm. and uh, funny enough i think it has started earlier than we expected yeah. we we started seeing this even uh, sometimes mid the last year and uh, we are uh, kenyans we have been receiving messages uh, from these uh, from, from these politicians, mm. uh, what they want to do, what they want to become, what do they want to achieve, yeah. what other people have not achieved, what they think they are going to achieve. But at the end of the day, you sit down and ask yourself, are they going to succeed where others they have not succeeded? Yeah. Are they going to bring another change which Kenyans are expecting? Because I want to tell you, I've been walking around and doing my consultant uh, leadership especially mm -hmm. with the with the with the with the with the community leaders church mm -hmm. leaders religious organizations NGOs but when you try to sit down and listen to them mm -hmm. they need a change they need, they a change. need a leadership change mm -hmm. in this country and they feel that can we have another generation of leaders in this country mm -hmm. but when we get the message from our from our leaders mm -hmm. we are not we don't see if we are going to get that change the message that they are passing on is doubtful yeah nobody want to believe it mm -hmm. And uh, I, especially when it came to photo registration, I was there, out there, mm -hmm. and uh, trying to encourage people to, 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 to register as, as photos. Mm. And they're asking, why? Why, why, why should I register? Do, do they feel disgruntled? Do they feel let down by the, by the leaders? Absolutely. Or the politicians? Because for them, they call them politicians, not leaders. Absolutely. They yeah. think that they feel we are, we, we, we are let down. Mm. And they're asking, are these the same people that are going to come again? And, uh, and we see a lot, of, a, lo a lot of messages that are not adding up. Yeah. Yes, so, so there is, I want to say that there is, uh, there, there, there is kind of a confusion. People mm. are saying, 
are we going to vote or am I going to vote or am I not going to vote? Yes. And at the end of the day, others will say, okay, we want so and so to, be, mm -hmm. to lead as this can, so I'm going to vote. Okay. So. Let, let, me bring, let me bring Daniel here at this particular point. Daniel, it's, it's, it, they, they, they say propaganda sells. And in politics, perhaps they want to sell the propaganda and they want to malign the name of the opponent to gain traction on their side. But in terms of packaging and how they disseminate that message to the masses, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. My question still remains, are they getting it right? Well, thanks, Victor. Um, let me first of all begin by uh, we, we, we are coming to a weekday mm. with tragedies of our road. So it's important that we, you know, um, condone with the families yes. that, uh, you know, um, were bereaved on this incident. But also trying to urge uh, people along the roads to mm. be very careful mm. um, of these uh, kind of things that we are seeing. Uh, it's also a pleasure to meet Sylvia again. Uh, Sylvia has been doing a lot of work in mm -hmm. terms of messaging and yeah. branding for um, political leaders mm -hmm. and amazing work. Yeah. Uh, Dactaria as well. So to the question that you've asked, um, you know, the crux of the matter are, 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 are here, mm -hmm. that there is a political campaign. Yes. And there is a target, you know, um, who you are targeting. Mm -hmm. And like I told you, I keep on telling you in this panel that, you know, um, not only politicians are geared towards getting the masses to listen to their messages, mm -hmm. but even more important as commissions that are involved in the campaign period, yeah. that are involved in electoral management period. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are just coming from an enhanced voter registration system for 21 days, mm -hmm. and the IEBC had made a target of over 5 million for young voters mm -hmm. who are targeted to register, you know, uh, as a new register in the, in the register list for IEBC. But one of the things that we can attribute that failure to is the fact that the commission didn't find it right with messaging. Mm. Uh, they didn't find it right with trying to urge the young people to take it seriously the importance of enrolling and enhanced voter registration. Yes. And therefore you see there was a miserable hit on the target. And uh, even doing a quarter w was a problem to, mm. uh, to registration. And then to the politicians that now um, we are discussing right now. Well, Daktari has mentioned, the Kenyan voters is systematically shifting mm. to listening to the explicit messages that politicians are giving them. And there is no doubt that Kenyan and Kenyan voters would want to really find an alternative. Yeah. They would want to find what we call the safe pair of hands. Mm -hmm. And leaders who are able you know, to salvage them from this kind of economic vulgarities mm. that we are seeing. Mm. So I agree that one, the issue to crack an information of alternative, the safe pair of hands that, you know, uh, voters would want to listen to. And uh, Victor, I was on a different set with Tom Wolf. you know, Tom Wolf with the work that is done mm. in, in research. Mm. And they gave a research, Tiff is just about to give a research on the number of yeah. undecided voters. Mm. And what the undecided voters, according to him mm -hmm. and his research firm, is that these people who are waiting are waiting to see who among the presidential candidates is able to yeah. communicate yeah. something unique that other alternatives are not offering. And that mm. brings me back to what Dr. Tari is mentioning. What then is the need yeah. of providing information that is relevant, tailor-made for the targeted voters so that they would vote you in? And lastly, it's here. What is the campaign messages that we are crafting? Yes. And let me give it to all the presidential uh, contenders. Mm. Because in contextual, in the context of the people they are meeting, they are camouflaging yeah. to make sure that if they are meeting people who are from the rift mm -hmm. and the farmers, mm in the maize millers, that information would be tailor-made for them. To resonate with to them. To resonate mm -hmm. with them exactly. at that yeah. specific context. Mm -hmm. If they are meeting residents and young people of Kibra, all the politicians would want to craft a message that would resonate with the urban poor, you know, would resonate with the youth, 
yeah. who are within those areas. Likewise, everybody, you've seen um, uh, the Honorable Musali Amdavid doing the same. Mm. When meeting, I think, Omunyala, he dresses the same way as an athlete. Mm. You know, to appeal to a certain constituency of voters yes. who are the same, the same to youth, Rao, the same to youth. So I, I think, give it to them. Mm. So far, all these presidential candidates in context of who they are going to meet mm. would want to identify with them okay but that is so far that is so far from what is really right. expected right. ideally let, let, let me bring in silver here as the ceo of public relations um society of kenya somebody will say ah, you're to pr <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you to, whatever they say all oh, this is pr yeah right yeah yeah thank you thank you victor i think that's a very serious uh, question you have asked yes because on many occasions even when politicians do say bad things or they give false promises people say that 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 is pr uh -huh. and that is so far from what pr is public relations is a very serious profession that has been around for years for mm. example the public relations society has been around for 50 years this year right so it's a very serious profession and the target of this profession is to give the right information mm. to the right people. It's about building stakeholder engagement, building relationships, yeah. managing reputations, and handling issues of crisis, when you have crisis issues, being able to communicate in the right way. Mm. It is a science and also an art, yes. a very serious prof profession that tries to make sure that when there is a situation, you're able to address the situation. Mm. Mm. So when I look at the question you asked, so first, let's just debunk the myth that this, you cannot say it's just PR. This is a serious <laughs> profession. We take, we take years in school to learn how to do this. So no, on the side of politicians. Yes, on the side of, the podium, yeah, so they've got ah, it wrong. We have PR yeah, people, no, they've got know? it wrong. They yes. don't understand what public relations yeah. is. Because mm -hmm. public relations is at the heart of what they do. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a, a politician who is successful without a strong brand. Mm. You cannot have a politician who's successful and doesn't follow what Daniel is saying. You're able to communicate your mm. message clearly. Mm. You're able to define that message first of all. Yes. Mm. For the specific audience, mm. you're able to identify who the target audiences are and then you communicate effectively to those audiences. Mm. So the first thing that uh, the politicians are getting wrong is not being able to segment their audiences. Mm. They go out there with a general message. You're talking to the masses. You're not talking to the masses. You're talking to a person. So you need to, first of all, invest in identifying who your audience is, and then being able to define a specific message for that audience. And now what the PR professionals do is help you do that. Be able to identify, it. I'm coming to speak to Victor, what does Victor like, what is Victor about, what does Victor hate, what, does, what kind of character mm. is Victor, and then I come up with a message that targets you and that can convince you to support me. So yes. this is something politicians need to understand, that public relations actually are a very serious profession that can help them meet their Exactly. And Dr. Terry, you know you're a leadership and development expert. Mm. And you know, when you talk about leadership, it's about, it's huge. It's not just a word mm. on its own, the way we can say you're a leader. It, it's, a, it's a whole kind of a block that has so many things in it. Mm. But is that exactly what we get after every five years? Thank you, Victor. I think, uh, first of all, I want to come back to what Sylvia said yes. and, and, and uh, my, my brother here. Mm. One of the things I keep on asking myself, yes. do they really hear what they say, these politicians, when they pass a message yes. out there? Do they really, really hear what they say? What they say. Okay. And, uh, and uh, beca because if they would sit down and uh, listen to themselves, they would correct themselves in the next uh, platform they would be speaking. Mm. I personally, when I'm, when, when I'm giving a lecture, or maybe when I'm addressing people, mm -hmm. I do recording. Mm -hmm. I sit it down and, uh, and, and uh, listen, what kind of a message did I pass Self -assessment. on? Self-assessment. You see? Yeah. And, then I, and then I correct myself in the next platform where I'm going to, 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 to be speaking. Mm. And, and one of the things that I've been uh, asking myself is this. Do these politicians need a coach even to learn how to communicate? Yes. They need a coach. And uh, we have, I have been talking with them. This is something, as people, me, I do, mm -hmm. coaching people how to speak, when to speak, mm -hmm. where to speak. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you, the message that you pass on mm. impacts people's life. 
mm. and it creates a platform for somebody to do something. Mm. Messages are very important. That's why a UK, I can take you to a court and they sue you mm. because of a message that you gave to me, yes. if that message was mm. not good. Mm. And that's why I really want to, to, to support what she, she does in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a PRI, public mm -hmm. relation. That is very important for any leader. And uh, because leadership is about influencing people. Yes. So how are you, how do we influence people? We influence people with the message that we give them. Mm. All this, what, 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 and then let me tell you, if we give a bad message or an favorable message to the people, that is what they are taking out there. Mm. Remember that leaders, they have, I think, uh, I, th I want to say that leaders, they have that kind of attraction yeah. that when they speak, people seem to say, yes, this is what I want to do. Mm. You see? Mm. So what kind of a message can a leader deliver? Mm. And, and me personally, let me tell you, Victor, mm -hmm. I really want to welcome and to advise mm -hmm. politicians to seek coaching in communication. Mm -hmm. They really need it. Because the message is that... Do they, they even come for it? They have been inviting them. They don't. <laughs> and they even, I remember 2012 or 2017, <laughs> I called one politician and I told him, I'm going to give you free services. And at that time, I was not in the country. I was in the U.S. Yes. And I told him, I was living in the U.S. And mm -hmm. I told him, mm -hmm. Come on, I'll let us strike a deal. I'm not going to charge you. I mm. charge here, but I'm not going to charge you because I want you to become a better mm. politician, mm -hmm. Mm. to coach you to be a leader, to coach you to know how to communicate, to coach you to know how to deliver yes. your message. Yeah. Because the message that you would want to... Uh, 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 you, know, you know there are some... Actually, let me tell you, mm. the way I see it is only by God's grace. <laughs> This country, the <laughs> messages that these politicians give does not, it's a recipe for mm. hatred, it's a recipe for war, the messages that they give. And, and perhaps if I bring Daniel uh, here, because when you look at this strategy, what each and every politician or each and every wing use, they use a particular strategy. Um, we talked about it sometimes, last, uh, uh, sometimes back. When you look at the deputy president, for example, um, he tried to split his campaign team, and there were chaos sometimes in Westlands, until now he had to step in. Uh, Raila Odinga is out of the country for a 10-day visit in Ethiopia and currently in India. The team are split. Another one was in Naikipi, another was in Homa Bay, part of Nyanza, and what have you. But we see different pictures from different regions. How does Secretariat operate to ensure that the team remain intact, the message remains clear. You don't go outside the rail, but you still hit the bullseye. It's all about strategy. Yeah, um, I think, I think um, in 2017, I was in a presidential campaign. Uh -huh. And um, one of the things that I advised by that time mm -hmm. was how would you have avoid divergent centers of power, mm. you know, that are crafting different messages on the same one presidential candidate. Yes. Because a candidate, the candidature yeah. is the message. The message. Sometimes. Yes. And that means that it has to be consistent through. Mm. You know, Victor, I wanted to say something before then. I would, uh, and I, I mentioned it, um, uh, Sylvia just mentioned, Dr. also mentioned it here, that let us recognize that do we have leaders influencing mm. the populace or populace influencing leaders. Mm. Mm. A very, very critical point of discussions always. Mm. Because, like I tell you, be it communication, be it campaign strategy, who influences who? Who influences who? That, 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 that's, that's a very, very important question. Mm. It, it is, it and, is and, the politician and, influencing and, and, the masses. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's like, like, like a debate of an, of an egg and a chicken. Which one comes first? Which one comes yes. first? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's quite critical to find an answer yeah. to that. Yeah. Because here we are at a very heightened campaign period, mm. and Dr. and Sylvia mentioned it. 
you know, we've not even prorogued the parliament. It's not even dissolved. Yeah, mm. But there is high octane campaigns already. It's on the move. Others began that campaign immediately. 2017 elections began. Somebody was already on the campaign train. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it could be very difficult right now to try to divide mm. the candidate's agenda. Mm. Because as a campaign messenger, he would tell you, my message has been very consistent for four years. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this is the direction I think it's taking. As a communication experts and as you know, public relations experts like Sylvia is, mm. the challenge that you'd probably meet is when you are going to try to advise this candidate yes. mm. to try to be very coherent with the voters. They'll tell you politics They'll tell is local. You politics <laughs> is contextual, is local, yeah. and sometimes it's very difficult to change that. Mm. And I think Sylvia knows here. Um, one, one at a time, we, 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 we tried to advise probably a politician mm. to try to, you know, tally and make sure that his, his dressing was like the youth mm. and his appearance was like the youth. <laughs> and he knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But you see, the response we got is that I am a politician mm -hmm. and I cannot try to relate to people who I am not like. Yes. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's like I would be faking. Mm -hmm. You know, you understand? Mm. So this is kind of, and it's not only probably that politicians, many of them, yeah. like Dr. Tari is saying, that you've invited them from classes, but they're not coming. Probably the reason they're not coming is that they're not ready you to come of age and meet the needs of the voters because they'll tell you politics. If I have to win the voters, yes. I have to be like them. You yeah. cannot advise me otherwise. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying, it is difficult it is right difficult. now to, okay. to try to tally with being, you know, the kind of a good politician you mm. are, very articulate, mm -hmm. you know, very morally upright, mm. when the context of the Kenyan voter will tell you that we like somebody who is very aggressive. Okay. So, you know, so, and all these things. So, so Sylvia, mm. it's all, politicians are always right. No, definitely not. <laughs> and I think I just want because to Because when Dr. Terry says that he yeah. invited one of them, I yes, said, no, uh, yes. hold on, I will deliver this. Yes. Yes. I, I think Dr. Terry has a very good experience, and I think that's the experience that we all have. Mm. Number one, politicians do not believe that they, they should be able to be coached. To be defeated. They, they believe that they are know, know it all kind of scenarios. And yeah. I can tell you what, that is a false idea. Mm. The best in class, and I want to use the best in class, who was Barack Obama. I don't mm. think there's any politician who's more articulate than mm. Barack Obama. He gets coaching. Barack mm. Obama never goes for any event without practicing his speech over and over. And when he practices his speech, they talk about not just the tone of the speech, mm. but also delivery. Mm. Mm. And delivery is very important. You can mm. be saying the best thing, mm. but how you deliver it yeah. really matters. So, so what Dr. Tan is saying the here about the need for coaching is very, very critical. Yeah. I want to go to the issue that, uh, that uh, Daniel has raised. The politicians also believe that they have so much experience, they know mm. how you know, everything mm. goes. Mm. The fact is, when you enter politics, you're supposed to distinguish yourself from your rivals. Mm. You're supposed to be able to demonstrate your value proposition as a leader. You're supposed to be able to demonstrate what is different about you. Yes. That is what the people are going to choose. Yes. Mm. Our politicians believe that if you have a long political standing, that is enough, and mm. it is not. And that is why they must accept that they have to work with professionals mm. who can be able to help them to even define how they dress. Mm. Yeah. You know? There's a certain politician who started wearing red trousers and other <laughs> types of things. And people are like, hey, what's going on with this guy? The reality is he was trying to resonate with the youth. Mm. There's a way the youth think, the youth culture. So if you really want to resonate with the youth, mm. you also have to pick up their way of dressing. You have to pick up their way of talking. You have to understand where they're coming and from. And we actually we are seeing that current because the youth forms a bigger chunk of yes, the voters. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so the next thing I want to say is that at the end of the day, building a value proposition, building your brand, mm. building how you you are perceived, because a brand is about building values that people, when they look at you, they know Victor is a good guy. Victor, when we when Victor is believable, mm. that when he says something, mm. we can trust him. Yeah. This is a process that uh, political communicators are able to help even these politicians to be able to change the brand. But I'm not saying mm. that we are here to put a brush on, mm. on, on a corrupt leader and say, okay, mm -hmm. now this leader is now a good guy. Yeah. The point is that even when you build a brand, it has to be based on the reality. It has to be based on what you have done and it has to be based on where you want to go as yes. well. Mm -hmm. So I think the, 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 the leaders need to understand 
that uh, as much as they are good at what they do, they are good at talking and issuing messages. Mm. But the messages must be r to a particular audience. The messages must have an objective. You don't just go on a platform and start saying anything. Yeah. Before you go there, you must have understood what it is you want to achieve with that audience that you're talking mm. to. Mm. And this is where, thinking about the messaging. Last, I want to say is that one of the challenges we have in this country, and that particularly, particularly with this election, mm. is this, this is the one election that had started without parties even having manifestos. Mm. Mm. Perhaps, you know, most politicians, they give us their manifesto towards the last days of the campaign. No, you have, you have to have clarity on what you <laughs> want to say before you say it. This is common sense. Mm. Actually, the only party that has a manifesto as we speak is ANC. Mm. No other party has given us their manifesto. Mm. People are giving political messaging mm. without, because the manifesto brings it all together. You have your clarity on what you want to achieve, you have your clarity on who you want to target, and you have your clarity on your message. So I think these, these parties need to go back to the drawing board, mm. really identify what are they promising. That's why you hear somebody coming with one promise. They're only, pr they're only discussing one promise throughout the mm. campaign. Yes. That's not the way it is. We want a holistic solution. We want to know these leaders, what are they really offering us? Mm. As they offer themselves for leadership, what are they promising? What mm. is that promise that we can buy as Kenyans? And this is missing. Doctor, do we have leaders or politicians in Kenya? I think there would be, we would want to find the, 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 the distinction between a leader and mm. a politician. And uh, for me, I want to say that uh, every, 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 a politician mm. is an occupation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Leadership is something that everyone is a leader. Mm. It's only actually... To be actually to be honest, a politician is being a politician is like being a, uh, uh, okay. Let's say okay. Let's go back to this. It's like being a journalist because in journalism yeah, we yes, have yeah. cameramen, yes. we have got editors. Yeah, editors all yes. is just like it's yes. something that you say that it's I want to become. It's yeah. just it's something that you want to yeah. become. But when we come to leadership or maybe to who is a leader, a leader is a somebody who is one mm. characteristic the first characteristic of a leader is a leader should be a respectful person mm -hmm. if they misses that then they cease to become an uh, mm -hmm. an authentic leader mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and uh, when I, when i when i uh, let me go back to 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 what about my brother and my sister saying yes what we are seeing now we are seeing messages being passed on by people who do not respect themselves. Yeah. Okay. That's new. <laughs> who do not respect themselves. Because if you respected yourself as a leader, yes. you would respect your country. That's number one. Mm. And uh, you would ask my, yourself, as a leader, what am I going to bring to, 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 to the people that I'm going to lead? Mm. And it's so sad I haven't done that research mm. to know it's only one, one party that has got a manifesto. Yes. yes. It's very, very sad. Yes. A leader always has got a direction. So if they don't have manifesto, where are they leading people? Mm. And that's why they keep on attacking one another. Because if you don't have your, your, uh, your, 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 your canvas, mm. where are you taking people? Mm. You are lost. Yes. And when you are lost, then you start attacking other people. You see? And that's why you see, uh, uh, again, coming back to what, what Sylvia said is, is this. When, if we, politician, uh, politics is going on right now, people are in a marketplace. Yes. And uh, because they are in a marketplace, their goal is only one thing to become either president or to have maybe majority leader. And that is the goal of all the politicians, come whatever play, uh, party you have, that's the goal to go to that. Mm. So if we took a goal, if Sylvia and myself, we took a same goal to the market, am I going to attack the goal of, 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 of Sylvia? Mm. Mm. <laughs> He's trying to see how I'm going to make my goal. Yeah. Liked so that it, it can, can be bought. It yeah. can be bought. Yes. 
But when I start turn around and they start attacking <laughs> unaona hii busi ya Sylvia iko hivi iko hivi people will get confused. I'm yeah. not concentrating on my busi. Yes. So what I'm hearing from these guys they are targeting either one another they are attacking one another mm. instead of coming straight and they sell the policy and perhaps perhaps uh, in politics that's what sells let, let me come to you D daniel what are some of the red lines? actually what is that red line that every politician knows that they should not cross well they'll attack each other they do all manner of things you know malign mud sling but there's some red lines you no know? they know these lines that if you go past that line uh -uh, that's a danger zone yeah do they observe such such red lines I, it's, it's a question that I have contended with. Yes. Um, in, in campaigns, I told you I was involved in one of the campaigns in 2017. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, just like there is principles in war, mm. that when you are engaged in, in war, I mean, uh, you know, invasion, then there are areas you avoid to, to invade. Mm. Um, refugee comes, you know, uh, churches mm -hmm. and uh, probably where people are seeking refuge. And mm. also you are not supposed to be attacking women and children. Mm. Generally, there are principles even in, in politics, the same. I mean, there is a line you don't cross. For example, by attacking um, uh, your opponent's family. It's something yeah. that is generally, you know, um, I, I, I know that probably is not really documented, mm. but principally you would make pronouncement, but when it comes to somebody's family, your opponent, you restrain. Mm. When it comes to somebody's, you know, health system, you restrain. Mm. You know, when it comes to incitement to violence, and incitement to mm -hmm. conflict violence, mm -hmm. you restrain. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, but, but you see, these are um, principles that you are told not to cross over. But I will tell you that when you look, especially when, um, you know, in a globalized world where there is technology and people are blogging mm -hmm. and, you know, um, somebody can make a pronouncement by the button of his phone, yeah. it's quite difficult even to regulate that because you never know who is using who to yeah. speak for them. Yeah. And uh, in the age of blogging, even if these politicians do not stand on podium to attack, but they will do that through proxies. And it's quite difficult sometimes to regulate that because that then would be very difficult to attach specifically an attribute that is, comes from different mm. any other person. Mm. But, but listen, um, we recently dealt with a scenario when either from other side, you know, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa in Azimir, yes. when the proponents were actually beginning, you know, to mobilize and ethnically profile people mm. and uh, speak coded language, you know, pointing towards a direction of incitement. Yes. This is what I'm saying, that sometimes it's quite difficult for us, but even in the pronouncement, even in that podium, and that's why I said here, mm. Uh, the difficulty that public relations experts and communication advisors have is packaging these politicians. Mm. Because at that specifically point when these things are being said, it is the crowd that gives a cheer. Yes. Mm. It is mm. the crowd that applauds yes. and cheer you to go on. You yeah. know, when you say in Semen, in Semen, people say, Sema, Sema. <laughs> you know, and proceed. <laughs> uh, and, and you see, <laughs> <laughs> a politicians is yeah. mixed in between mm. trying to get you know popularity and then the aura of the crowd and euphoria mm. by the time and i agree with what dr Tari talked about sometimes you make this pronouncement do you listen to them after the speech mm. do you really listen that you know i was over excited mm. that in one way or the other consciously or unconsciously I incited ethnic balkanization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know i mobilized people towards violence yes so Victor, I think one of the things that, um, you know, all communication advises mm. and public relations advises in the context of a heightened okay. voter system, you must really begin. And I agree with Sylvia. Mm. People need to be packaged. People need to be coached. Mm -hmm. Guys, even, even on what the electoral laws are, mm -hmm. you know, it goes down to that. Yes. On even the constitution of Kenya. You'll yeah. be very surprised that some of these members of parliament mm do not even understand 
whether their statements are insightful, okay. mm -hmm. whether their statement is breach of chapter 6 of the constitution, they don't. And it perhaps, requires, it perhaps requires a coaching to do that. It needs a coaching to do that, but then our politicians will always say that, you know, when I go to the ground, when I attack Daniel, that gives me mileage. All right, let's take a break. And when you come back, we're still going to talk more on strategy yes. in terms of how to attack your opponent tactfully, but not, you know, in a certain way that can bring animosity amongst the communities and how to bring that national outlook during our campaign. So we're taking yes. a break. We'll be right back.